Good morning. Jarvis Christian University is celebrating its 111th year of educating the head, the heart, and hand. Our theme this year is transformation, pivoting from excellence to preeminence. This celebration allows us to consider what our aspirations have been, reflect on our 111 years of growth, determination, and greatness, celebrate all that we have achieved together, and aspire yet again as success is never final. Our program will proceed as printed. Good morning, let us pray. Our Father and our God, how we thank you. How we adore your name. We're grateful for the marvelous, magnificent and manifold blessings you bestowed on us. We realize that you've been faithful and we're grateful. Thank you for Jarvis Christian University. Thank you for the faculty, the administration, the staff, the presidential cabinet and our president. Lord, as we celebrate 111 years, we look back with, with excitement, with gladness and reflection we stand today, yet marching on, and we look forward to the future with great anticipation and expectation. It is our prayer today that you would minister to the various needs that are named among us. They are diverse, they are many, but we know that you are sovereign. You rule and you reign. So Lord, minister to those various needs. Be with those who are program participants today. The speaker, give her words of encouragement that will uplift and inspire each of us. Again, be with our president, the presidential cabinet, and all of our students. All of those who are affiliated and associated and aligned with Jarvis Christian University. We pray that you would give us the strength, the fortitude, to continue to march on and be strong. To this end, we give you the praise and the glory, for it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning to our president, Dr. Lester C. Newman, our first lady, Ms. Gloria Newman, our speaker, president, executive cabinet, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends of Jarvis Christian University. I am Marlene Rivas, a freshman business administration major with concentrations in accounting and management. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome each of you to this JN Urban Founders Day Convocation here at Jarvis Christian University. What a difference a year makes. Last year, we welcomed you to Jarvis Christian College's Founders Convocation. Today, we welcome you to Jarvis Christian University's Founders Convocation. This is a time that we set aside to remember those who paved the way for us to be here today. We remember the women and men who thought that educating the head, heart, and hand were important for us to succeed of every day. To succeed, sorry. Important for us to, for the success of every individual. Today, we ask that you be reflective and attentive, and remember the dreams, work, and sacrifice that were made so that we can be here today and live out our dreams for the 21st century and beyond. Again, you are welcome.
Good morning. In 2019, the Founders Convocation and the JEM Lecture, Se Urban Lecture Series were combined into one event, which is held annually on the fourth Thursday of March. Founded in 1912 as Jarvis Christian Institute, we are celebrating 111 years of existence now as Jarvis Christian University. Founders Convocation was instituted in 2013 to formally commemorate the founding of this great institution and to honor the founders and others associated with making Jarvis a dream come true for our most deserving students. This event is, is held annually on the fourth Tuesday, excuse me, is on Thursday of each year. The J.N. Urban Lectureship was, is supported by the university funds to honor the memory of James Nelson Urban, founder president of Jarvis Christian University. The lectureship was conceived and initiated by Dr. E. W. Rand, a student and co-worker during the life of President Urban. Dr. Rand was the seventh president of Jarvis Christian University. The J. N. Urban lectures are planned to be see, planned to be significant to the history, philosophy, and academic programs of Jarvis Christian University. This lectureship is a heritage program. The lecturer may be a teacher, clergyman, staff, or faculty person an alumnus or ex-student who is acquainted with the heritage of Jarvis Christian University. The lecturer need not to be a Jarvis graduate. However, the lecturer must be an outstanding scholar. Lectures are chosen in keeping with the mission of the history of Jarvis Christian University. The lecture series began in 1977. Again, thank you all for coming out to help us to celebrate 111 years of Jarvis Christian University.
Jarvis Christian University. I'd like to first give honor to God. Please join me by bowing your head in prayer. For we walk by faith, not by sight, because our God knows what we need and when we need it. So we will remain silent and patient and waiting for his instruction and not our own. Today we have the privilege of being able to celebrate our 111th Founders Day here at Jarvis Christian University. Celebrations, big and small, are a bit different when you endure a national pandemic, right? <laughs> More meaningful even, because we're all human and thrive from being in one another's company. So celebration shouldn't be taken for granted and we aren't gonna start today. I'm Dr. Leslie Latham. Assistant Professor in the Department of Business Administration here at Jarvis, and I am so happy to be here. I'd like to now thank the Jarvis Christian University Board of Trustees, our esteemed president, Dr. Lester C. Newman, our administration, the faculty, the staff, our beloved students, and our Jarvis community of alumni, family, friends, and supporters. I'm very happy to see each and every one of you here with us on this day. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> Scholarship and lifelong learning. To advocate lifelong learning by challenging and supporting students and staff to pursue intellectual, personal, and professional development. Service to intentionally provide a quality experience for students, colleagues, surrounding communities and the nation through community service and civic engagement as service is the core of our profession. Integrity, the exhibit, to exhibit ethical behavior and and beyond the academic setting and be good stewards of our financial resources, acting as persons of high character guided by a commitment to transparency fairness, and honesty. Respect, to embrace the doctrines of faith, family, and community, which ensure inclusiveness and diversity, understanding that every individual should be treated with professionalism, courtesy, and kindness. Responsibility, to be responsible and accountable for our actions in every situation, as, is, as it relates to the college, the community, and the nation and Christian ethics, to emphasize that the Christian spiritual path provides an ethical code that when followed will make for a better person, a better college, a better community, and a better world. Jarvis Christian University, what did I just recite? Yes, the Jarvis Christian University guiding principles. Principles that have indeed helped navigate from our 1912 founding by the group Women of Disciples Christian Church to where we are on this day. God has and continues to equip us with the strength, knowledge, and resources to persevere. And persevere we have for 111 years and counting. Okay? Yes! I've given you all an opportunity to awaken. Again, I greet you. Good morning, Jarvis Christian University family and friends. Welcome. Yes, welcome. I'm both honored and privileged to introduce to you your speaker for this momentous 111th Founders Day, Reverend Dr. Cynthia L. Hale. Dr. Hale is the founding and senior pastor of the Ray of Hope Christian Church located in Decatur, Georgia whose congregation's vision is to impact and transform this present world into the kingdom of God by way of housing, health care, and education incentives, and is also recognized in the book Excellent Protestant Congregation, The Guide to Best Places and Practices. Dr. Hale's natural talent in music led her to study at Collins College in her native of Virginia, where she received her Bachelor of Arts degree. She also holds a Master of Divinity degree from Duke University in Durham, North Carolina, and a Doctor of Ministry from the United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. In 2004, 
Dr. Hill established a mentoring program known as Elah Pastoral Ministries Incorporated to assist in the spiritual and practical development of pastors and parachurch leaders. In 2005, she convened her first national conference for Women in Ministry Conference Incorporated, another ministry she created, she established, whose focus mission is to develop, coach, and mentor Christian women in ministry for the 21st century. If you're looking for Dr. Hale these days, you can find her serving on the Board of Trustees at Highlands University as the chairperson of uh, as the chairperson of the board of directors at Beulah Heights University, the chairperson of the board of directors for the City of Hope Ministries Incorporated, and as the assistant secretary for the Hampton Ministries Conference. So she's busy. Dr. Hale has received numerous honors and recognition. She was inducted into the African American Biographies Hall of Fame and the Martin Luther King Jr. Board of Preachers of Morehouse College. She was also appointed by President Barack Obama to serve on the President's Commission on White House Fellowships in July of 2009. She is a dedicated and active member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She is a contributing writer for many books and publications, including the book Power in the Pulpit 2. How America's Most Effective Black Preachers Prepare Their Sermons. In January 2010, she authored her first novel, I Am a Piece of Work, Sister Shaped by God. In September 2011, she was honored by the National Urban League as a recipient of the inaugural Women of Power Award. In 2012, she was awarded the Preston Taylor Living Legacy Award at the 22nd Annual Biennial Session of the National Convocation of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. Later in November 2012, she was honored by Ebony Magazine as a part of the Power 100, which is an annual compilation of the most influential Americans, African Americans in the country. I am honored and privileged to introduce to you our Founders Day speaker, a woman of vision, revered worldwide for her leadership, integrity, and compassion, Reverend Dr. Cynthia L. Hale.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. To our esteemed president, Dr. Lester C. Newman, First Lady, Mrs. Gloria Newman, other administrators, faculty, staff, students, and friends of Jarvis Christian University gathered here for the J.N. Irvin Founders Day Convocation. What a joy it is for me to be back at um, Jarvis again. It's been several years as a disciple of Christ. We used to come here regularly, and I have many wonderful, <coughs> excuse me, friends who are alums of this awesome university. Thank you, Dr. Newman and Dr. Dinkins, for your gracious invitation and your warm hospitality. Thank you, Dr. Leslie Lantham, for your introduction. And thank you, choir, for blessing us. You took me back to Hollins University. It was a college when I was there. It became a university. And it reminded me of singing in the choir because I was a voice major there. It's so good to see so many old friends, particularly the Southwest Regional Minister, the Reverend Andy Mangum. Let's go to the word, shall we? Genesis, the first chapter, verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And then Paul says to us in Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 10, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Now, I notice that you all are not talking to one another, so just indulge me for a moment and look at your neighbor next to you and tell him you are a piece of work. Look at your other neighbor and say, look, did you hear what your other neighbor said to you? You are a piece of work. God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be found acceptable in thy sight because you have blessed us beyond measure and we need to hear from you today. Thank you, God, for these members of this great community. Speak now to us as only you can. I pray that in the next few moments I would decrease and you would increase so that the people will hear and see none of me but all of you. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Depending on whom we ask and when, we will get various opinions of what others think of us. If living, loving, working, and being with us is fairly easy and a joy most of the time, then we will hear nothing but glowing reports. But if, on the other hand, we work everyone's nerves, making excessive demands on the relationship as well as the person, then what you might hear is that you are a piece of work. Being a piece of work to us means that you can be a bit much and you know it. Being labeled a piece of work is clearly not a compliment from a human perspective, but when God calls you one, you need to know that you are somebody's presser. You are the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. It is from the creation story in Genesis, the book of beginnings, that we first are made aware that each of us is a piece of work. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and everything in it. The verb used here for create is bara, and it means to create something out of nothing. But it cannot be limited to that understanding, as we shall soon see. This verb is also used in Scripture only with God as the subject. God is the creator. Nothing exists apart from God. It was God who brought everything into being. Psalm 19.1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of God's hands. The solar system and galaxies, the moon and the stars are all works of God's hands. But in the words of R. Kent Hughes, as awesome as the cosmos is, it is not God's best work. <clears throat> Indeed, all of nature radiates the incomparable glory of God. The birds and the bees, the flowers and the trees, the mighty oak, the tall slender pine, the voluptuous Bradford pear with its array of warm colors in the fall, as well as the dogwood or cherry blossoms who both give the pear tree stiff competition in the spring. 
the purple mountains majesty, the waves of the ocean crashing against the coastline, the white sandy beaches sparkling in response to the rays of the tropical sun, inviting us to swim with the dolphins and watch out for the whales. The polar bears coming out of their caves, the lion king roaring in the jungle as the lioness keeps watch over her feisty cubs. All of this, though absolutely breathtaking, is not God's best work. There was still one last piece, the crown in touch queen. Uh, what in the world could that be when everyone would agree that God's dream world was complete? But from God's perspective, he was not yet finished. My grandmama would say he indeed had to put the icing on the cake. The Bible declares that you and I are the crown jewels of God's creation. When God made us, God poured himself into his work, pulled out all the stops, and saved the best for last, making us distinctive. This is made clear in a number of ways. First of all, we were created with divine deliberation. On the sixth day, the day humans were created, there was a holy huddle, a divine deliberation between the persons of the Godhead. Let us make man in our own image and likeness, they said. The word used for man is Adama. It refers to humanity in general, not just men. Male and female, God created us in his image and likeness. Though the scriptures do not spell out specifically all that it means to be made in the image and likeness of God, the word image refers to being a representative of, and likeness talks about being similar to. Like God, we have a personality. We can think, reason, plan, discern between right and wrong, and make decisions. We can relate to others like ourselves, loving and being loved, feeling a wide range of emotions, and giving expressions to them. We were created for intimate relationship first with God. We are spiritual beings. We have the privilege of walking and talking with God, sharing our innermost thoughts and de our desires and concerns. But you and I both know that we don't always avail ourselves of the privilege. Too often we try to handle life on our own, getting all bent out of shape, worrying about what is beyond our control, frustrated by that which only God can fix. I suppose that's what prompted the songwriter to say, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Being created in the image of God also relates to the social or community concept of God. God is three persons in one. When God created humans in his image and likeness, God couldn't create a single individual. It's not good for man or woman to be alone. God created us male and female, corresponding to the community aspect of God's nature. Out of the first pair came a people of the most amazing array of sizes, shapes, and shades with varying personalities, moods, and attitudes. We're not only spiritual, but we're social beings as well. We were created for relationship with one another, and we need one another. The psalmist reminds us, oh, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. We don't always get this right either, do we? We fuss and fight, compete with one another for choice, positions, opportunity, men and women on the campus and beyond. We get all bent out of shape with one another, disrespecting and being disrespected. We can be picky and petty when we are needed to be supportive and affirming. This is not good especially in times like these. We need one another. Given who we are, when we partner with one another, celebrate each other, and combine the gifts and abilities, there is absolutely nothing that we cannot overcome, cannot achieve. Can we can change the world. Therefore, we are to love one another without limit and accept each other unconditionally, be, making sure that we are patient with one another, even under the most trying circumstances, forgiving one another, even as God has forgiven us. Not only did God create us after divine deliberations, God created us by design. The God who created everything else by the word of his mouth formed humans. The word formed is the verb bara, 
This time it describes the work of an artist fashioning or making something out of existing matter like a potter toiling over and shaping an earthen vessel from clay, creating something new and perfect. I love the psalmist David's depiction of how God formed us in Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. What a word to hear when you are wondering if your life even matters. What an affirmation when you're struggling to believe that God could ever make anything good out of your life. You've made so many mistakes. You've had so many rough places along the way. So many bad things happen that just weren't fair by anyone's estimation. You can't help but believe that it's because there is something fundamentally wrong with who you are. All of us go there <clears throat> at some time or another whether we want to admit it or not. I know you're trying to be strong, macho, all together, but well, you're really not because you've experienced rejection by those you thought should have kept you, a lack of approval from those we desperately needed to affirm you, harsh criticism from the very ones you needed to validate you will make you go there. Your life hasn't turned out the way you expected it to, to especially when you compare yourself to others. All of this and more causes us to have feelings of frustration and alienation and defeat and wonder why God would even allow you to go through this. What's wrong with me, you say? Am I not good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, spiritual enough? Am I not worthy of God's love and consideration? You need to know that when you were created, you were made with divine intentionality. You are tailor-made. Everything about you is just right. There is no one in the world world quite like you. When God made you, God knew exactly what you would need to be the individual that he destined you to be, to fulfill the purpose for which you were created. He created your inmost being, shaping you physically, emotionally, and intellectually for your assignment. You have the personality in line with your purpose, the creativity for your commission. You are intellectually equal to any task, great or small. Your mind is amazing. There's nothing that you can't do. No subject that you can't master. You are brilliant and you need to realize that and act like you know. You are unique. Out of the 8 million billion people in the world, no two of us is alike. We are all different. The smallest part of our anatomy, our fingerprints attest to that fact. But it's not your fingertips that makes you distinctive, nor is it the color of your skin, hair, or eyes that set you apart. Those of you who keep judging your worth and value on your outer appearance and allowing others to do the same need to hear me this morning. You keep looking up to everybody else, admiring their looks, their statue, thoroughly enamored by their qualities. They don't have anything on you. The people you admire aren't any more powerful and awe-inspiring than you are. You need to know who you are. There may be limitations, but you can never be duplicated. There may be cheap imitations, but who you are is distinct. There's nobody in the world like you. There'll never be anybody else in the world like you. You are one of a kind. Stop comparing yourself to others. Do you, boo? Be who you are. Show the world how special you are. And work with what you got. Too many of us are guilty of living beneath our privilege and potential when you are capable of so much more. You do just enough to get by, settling for less than what God has done for you, Pray, playing when you need to be studying, refusing to ex ex exercise balance in your life, work and play, study and pray, party and rest, balance. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope she's not talking to you, but I think she is. Lest you forget, capacity and ability require accountability and responsibility. 
Even if you have it all together, you dare not become comfortable or complacent thinking you have achieved all you were created to achieve and be pleased to live at a level of existence lower than which God has made it possible for you to live. When we think about how God has made us, we need to give God praise, not just with our lips, but with our lives. The psalmist says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We were created to make his praise glorious, called out of darkness into the marvelous light that we might declare the praises of him who has blessed us beyond measure. God is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Hebrew word for fearful is yare, and it means to be feared, to be reverenced, to terrify, to make afraid. Here you are feeling unsure, insecure, lacking confidence, second-guessing yourself and your decisions. You are afraid to step out of the box that others have put you in with their comments and critiques about whether or not you have what it takes to do what you've been dreaming about. What do they know? They didn't create you, and they don't know all that God has deposited in you. You obviously don't know who you are, how fierce you are. You don't understand the full extent of your possibility and power. God has given you everything you need to be. Not only has God made you fearful, but God has made you wonderful, marvelous. That word means extraordinary. Hmm? I think I saw that word in the theme Pivoting from excellence to preeminence. Not everybody gets to be preeminent. You only have to work for that. You have to go beyond the norm. You have to push past the limits. All of this makes clear God's love for us. It also affirms your dignity and your worth. God's love for us is an everlasting love, a love that will not let us go, a love that will see us through anything and everything and bring us safely through. The fact that God loves us also assures us that God knows what is best for us and God will give the best to those who leave the choice to him. You've been shaped for significance and you've been shaped for service. It's the Apostle Paul who further affirms in Ephesians 2.10 that you are God's workmanship, a piece of work created in Christ Jesus to do good work. Now, normally, a finished piece of work is displayed in an art gallery, a museum, or stores designed to auction or sell it at a premium price. But God is not trying to have you act like a museum masterpiece or a centerpiece on a coffee table or shelf collecting dust. God has so designed you as his masterpiece to represent him in the world. I know that you're currently in school preparing to one day find your place in the world. Given who you are, you can be and do anything you want to do. The sky is the limit. I just came to remind you that whatever your chosen professor, you must use it as an opportunity to advance God's cause of justice and equality, quality of life and opportunity to live out one's purpose for everyone and not just a precious few. In the words of Mordecai to Esther, the peasant girl who became a Persian queen, you have come to royal position for such a time as this. The world in which we live is filled with hurting, broken people. People are literally living on the edge. There's a silent epidemic that affects millions of people in our country every day. It's called food insecurity. People who look just like you and me, maybe someone sitting next to you, is wondering where their next meal is coming from or will they have enough money to buy food. Children deprived of an adequate diet are at a greater risk of not reaching their full potential as individuals and seeing their dreams come true. Too many children are struggling to keep up academically, especially since the pandemic, rendering them unable to compete for the best careers and jobs, possibly ending up in the street or in a life of poverty or crime. 
People are walking the streets with no place to go, homeless, sleeping in shelters if they are lucky, too many sleeping in their cars. Some are students taking a shower in the gym so that they can then go to class. And while Congress continues to refuse to pass stricter gun controls, mass murders have become the norm in our nation, happening in the streets, in schools, in churches.
I would like to say this about Cynthia. And, and, you know, I've known her for quite some time, so I knew her when she had another last name and another last name. <laughs> so sometimes I don't know what to call her, <laughs> but my friend. But Cynthia, since she's been here, she's lost a brother, a husband, and a father, but she never stopped. She's truly dedicated to Jarvis. Those of you who come to the president's office, you probably see her before you see me. And she has the answer. So we appreciate you, Cynthia. Thank you for being part of the family. Thank you very much. And in our tradition, I would like to present this flag to our speaker, which reads, Jarvis Christian University salutes Dr. Cynthia Hill, senior pastor of the Ray of Hope Christian Church, and a profoundly anointed woman of God, mentoring Christian women in ministry for the 21st century. Speaker, the 11th annual J. N. Irvin Founders Convocation, Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. Presented by Dr. Lester C. Newman, President. I know we have announcements here, and he told me not to say anything, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Uh, Dr. Mangum, will you stand up? Mangum, will you stand up? He's a friend of Jarvis Christian University, has been since I've been at, at Jarvis Christian University when it was Jarvis Christian College. Um, he's the head of the Disciples of Christ here in, in, in our area. We appreciate your support. We appreciate you coming to be part of us, and thank you very much. And you are coming to lunch with us, right? So thank you, Dr. Mangum. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will present our announcements for March 23rd, 2023. Founders Week activities will, will continue for the remainder of this week. Uh, tonight is the Gospel Explosion featuring Pastor Bertrand Bailey Jr. and Psalmist Nancy Taylor and our wonderful choir here at 7 p.m. this evening right here in the Smith Howard Chapel. All faculty, staff, and students are encouraged to attend. The preeminence awards gala will take place on Friday, March 24, 2023 at seven o'clock p.m. Our founders homecoming worship service will be on Sunday, March 26, 2023 at 11 a.m. in the Smith Howard Chapel right here. And our guest preacher for the day is Reverend Kenneth Reese of St. Paul Baptist Church in Sacramento, California. We recognize all religions here at Jarvis Christian University, and yesterday, or yesterday evening, was the beginning of Ramadan uh, for all of our students of the Islamic faith. It ends on April 20th, 2023. Uh, please pray for and offer support to our Muslim brothers and sisters uh, during Ramadan. And also, if you need uh, special accommodations for your meal times, please come to our office, send me an email, or stop by the student services office, please. International Week is next week. Uh, please contact Ms. Linda Hernandez-Meeks for more information. I know that the uh, Multicultural Student Organization the, and, uh, and Ms. Meeks have planned a wonderful week next week of uh, activities. Uh, International Week Chapel service will be March 28, 2023 at 11 o'clock a.m. And our guest speaker is uh, Jarvis, uh, former Jarvis student, but, uh, Colonel Khalid Shabazz of the United States Army. Please be reminded that after the benediction, please hold your seats uh, until the procession has ended. Those have been our announcements for today, March 23rd, 2023. Thank you very much. May we stand for the alma mater?
applause for the benediction. Lord, thank you for all that's been said and done on this beautiful day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And we said, amen.